Hi there, it's me Lillian Lati from I Want My Body Back and today's video is on how to stop your bag causing you neck, back and shoulder pain. Oh, and hip pain as well. Um, share this video with those that you know who have back, neck, shoulder or hip pain and you've got a feeling it possibly is to do with the bag that they're carrying, okay? Um, now, I'm going to show you a range of bags that I've got here and demonstrate how exactly it can cause pain and how to stop it. Because I've had so many clients come to see me about a back, neck, shoulder or hip problem. And then when I've investigated and I've asked them several questions, and particularly when I've asked them about bags, what they carry, sometimes, the majority of the time, it comes down to what it is that they're carrying, not only in their bags, but the way they're carrying the bag. So I'm going to demonstrate the best way of utilizing your bag so that you don't get any more back, neck, shoulder or hip pain. Now, everything that I share in my videos, there's more videos on my YouTube channels as well as my Facebook page, Lillian Lati, I Want My Body Back Coach. Um, all of the videos and all the information that I share in my videos is just general, it's general um, information that I'm sharing with you. So be mindful that if you've got an underlying issue or an underlying um, cause to your back, neck, shoulder or hip pain, that you must get that treated, you must get that seen too. Okay, so it's important that I stress that. So the first type of bag I'm going to demonstrate to you is... Uh, I'm going to go with the rucksack first of all, okay? A humble rucksack, where we tend to put loads of stuff in our rucksack, whether it's we're going to the gym, um, or we're packing stuff for work, or we're going on a trip or something somewhere. And uh, first of all, I'm going to show you the common mistake that I see when people have put on a rucksack, okay? So first of all, sometimes the rucksack is really, really heavy, okay and uh, and that is just disastrous for your posture and, and that's likely to cause you pain as well secondly i see people who, who carry rucksacks just carry it on one shoulder okay what happens when you carry it on one shoulder that shoulder is going to take a lot of the strain chances are it's going to sooner or later the tendons and the muscles will start to kick in and say to the brain hold on a minute we're, we're under strain here we want to protect whatever is going on so what we're going to do is we're going to raise the shoulder up a little bit contract those muscles so that we're a bit protected so this is what i tend to see when you know people are carrying their rucksack using one shoulder also, sometimes what I see is the side that the rucksack is being carried on, either that shoulder is being dragged down and this shoulder is up because the brain is trying to balance out the body. The, back, the brain is very clever at this, okay? So the brain recognizes that there's some type of strain going on with the body and it tries to balance itself out. So you end up being kind of lopsided. Not a good look. The next mistake that I see commonly people use with their rucksack, and I'm just going to move away slightly so you can see, is because the rucksack is either so heavy or it's not um, packed correctly, is this. You'll see that there'll be a gap here between the back and the rucksack. Okay, you can see that slightly there. Okay, now what will happen is because the rucksack is so heavy or poorly packed, the rucksack is likely to drag you backwards. It will put a strain in the middle of your back here, particularly in your lumbar area going up into the thoracic area, okay? When the, the back and the body starts to realize that there's a lot of strain, what happens is the shoulders start to round forward to protect, to hitch up the, the rucksack, okay? Which means the shoulders round forward, the shoulders start to go up as well, the neck gets thrown out of its position, and then you end up with pain in your neck, your shoulder and your chest area, as well as overstrain from the upper back, as well as the middle of the back. Again, not really good for you and your body. So ideally, you want your rucksack close to your body. You want to be one with your rucksack as you're moving, as you're standing. So as you can see now, I've positioned it correctly, pull my strings in place. This is what these are for, okay? So that my rucksack fits closely to my back and I'm moving one with my rucksack. It's not pulling me backwards and I'm not using my shoulder on my hands to have to hitch it forward, okay? So make sure that you're one with your rucksack, okay? And that way you'll have less pain in your back, neck and shoulder, okay? So that's the, uh, the rucksack. The next one I see, particularly for us ladies, the handbag, where we put the kitchen sink in, we put everything that we desire in our handbags, okay? And basically, why is it called a handbag? 
because we it's designed to carry in our hands. Okay, so I'm just going to step back so you can see me fully. So we carry it in our hands. Okay, what I see a common mistake is we carry it on the wrist area here. Now, I know it's a fashion statement, it's a fashion type of thing that to carry it like this, you know, but this is what happens. We carry it like this, the bag is heavy, shoulder goes up to protect the elbow, that little joint there that's taking the strain of your heavy handbag. <laughs> and that's why sometimes people end up getting um, what we call impingements in the shoulders, okay? You can also incur trapped nerves around these delicate areas because you've got, you've got a whole lot of delicate nerves that run through from the wrist into the elbow area, okay? And um, there's such a thing called tennis elbow, and there's another one called golfer's elbow, okay? And this is where the nerve pinches against the joint. And sometimes it is caused by carrying our handbags like this, okay? So if you want to avoid that, carry your handbag in your hand, okay? <laughs> Just set that in your hand. Another mistake I see us ladies make with our handbags is we carry it on our shoulders. You say to yourself, well, Lillian, how else am I supposed to carry my handbag? Like I said, it's called a handbag, so you carry it in your hand. But because we've got the kitchen sink in our handbag, it's heavy. Similar to like the rucksack um, demonstration that I showed you earlier, either we hitch the shoulder forward and upwards to protect, okay, the strain that's going on in there, that gets into the neck muscles as well, okay. You're overstraining your upper back, so you end up getting backache as well. And this is what I see from the side profile on some of us women like this, with our handbags, okay. If you want to carry your, your handbag on your shoulder, make sure you've got a decent amount of weight in there that it's not going to put a strain on your shoulder or your neck or your back, okay? And that it's comfortable to rest on your shoulder so that your shoulders are equal. Not that you've got one hitched up here or one hitched up there. In fact, I don't even carry my handbag on my shoulder at all. Maybe sometimes I'll carry it on my my elbow, but I make sure that my shoulders are nice and relaxed, okay? And that the bag is not too heavy and it's gonna put a strain on my elbow, but a majority of the time, I carry my handbag in my hand. <laughs> so that's that one. I know you ladies are not liking me right now. You're like, what, what's Lillian talking about? Oh. But it's true, you test it out and see. When I test this with my clients and then it clicks, they say, you know what? Yes, I've been carrying this bag or I've been carrying that bag. That is what's causing me. I said, right, come back to me next week. Stop using that bag for a week. Come back to me and let's see what, what progress is. When they come back, like, you're right, Lillian. Like, of course. Next one is our humble um, it's the shoulder bag, I call it, where a majority of us tend to put it across our body. So like a bit like a body bag, okay? So it tends to come down here, just step back so you can see, it tends to come across the body and tends to rest on the hip. I had one client who came to me who um, has a bag similar to this um, and she was having problems, diagonal problems going across and she couldn't figure it out. She's like, no, but I've got pain in this shoulder and I've got pain in the opposite hip. And so again, through investigating and answering her questions, we figured out it was her shoulder bag, okay? Again, it goes back to how much stuff you're carrying in your bag, which will cause a strain on this shoulder. So if it's a strain, not only does this shoulder hitch up to try and protect whatever is going on and straining the shoulder area, your shoulder will go forward, overstrain the back, get the neck out of sequence, out of um, alignment. You'll also find that your hip will turn slightly because it tries to protect it as you're walking, okay? Whether you're holding onto the bag or not, okay? If that bag is heavy and it's pulling downwards, it will affect your hip, okay? So, always make sure your bag, okay, it's got um, measurements on here that you can um, move it to the relevant position so that it doesn't put a strain on your hip. Not too many items in your handbag, okay? And just making sure that it fits nicely on your shoulder and it's not too heavy and it's not dragging you down one side, okay? So that's for your shoulder bag. And then my final bag is these bags that I commonly see people using. I'm not advertising uh, Vita Coco, it's just a bag that I happen to have at home. But it's the, it's the humble shopping bag that we take um, when we're going shopping to buy stuff 
um, and we end up putting lots of stuff in. It's the same thing. I see people either they're not carrying it in their hand, okay, or they're putting it on their shoulder. Then they've got their rucksack as well. We put this on, we're commuting to work or to our, our business appointments or going on holiday, etc. etc. And then what else have we got? And we've got our handbag as well. And and this is the look. You see them trugging along, commuting, go running for the bus, running for the train, and everything is congested up here in the shoulders and in the chest. Okay, the chest is getting tight, so you've got that rounded effect, the shoulders are getting tight, so they're hitching up towards your ear, the neck is protruding out of alignment, chin is forward, you've got this on your elbow, putting a strain on there, and oh my goodness, by the time you get to your destination, or on the bus, or on, you know, your public transport, your shoulders will be like, help, you know, so let's be mindful of all the, the bags that we're carrying, particularly us ladies, okay, men as well, but particularly more so us ladies. Firstly, make sure if it's a handbag, carry it in your hand. If you want to put it on your shoulder, that's entirely up to you. <laughs> but make sure that the weight is of a good amount that it's not going to put your shoulder, your neck, or your back out of, um, out of position, okay, and it's not going to cause it any pain. Secondly, just be mindful of how many bags you're carrying. Like I said, the last demonstration, I've seen loads of commuters doing that. You know, people just carrying so many bags on top of themselves. You know, there's other alternatives. You can use wheelie um, suitcases, small little wheelie rucksacks as well that have got wheels that you can wheel along with you. I've had many clients now, they've just changed over to that and they say, Lillian, I find it's much, much better for me now. Um, you know, different types of shoulder bags, when you're buying them, when you're buying your handbags, think about these things, particularly if you're prone to back, neck and shoulder pain, okay? Um, and yeah, and like I said, with the rucksack as well, make sure it's not too heavy, make sure it fits you and you're as one with your rucksack. And this is not only for yourself, but also for your children. If you've got children, they carry rucksacks. Check their rucksack. Make sure it's the right measurement for them. It's not too big for them. And they're not carrying too much heavy stuff in that rucksack as well, because that will cause them pain as well in their, their neck, shoulder, and their back. They may not say to you, but I, 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 I can tell and I know. All right, that's it for today's video. So like I said, share this video with people that you know who have back, neck, shoulder, and hip pain as well and you think hmm yeah possibly it is their bag that they've carried because I've seen them carrying their bag quite awkwardly as well and also you know put some of these um what I've, what I've mentioned the solutions into place for yourself and have a look when you're going up and down and around look at how people are carrying their bags on their shoulders or their wrist or their rack sacks as well and I'm telling you you'll be surprised what you see okay so if doing all of that, you put that into play and you still get in back, neck and shoulder, book in for a, a back, neck and shoulder pain, book in for a free assessment, free consultation. Details are on my Facebook page, public Facebook page, or you could go to my website, uh, iwantmybodyback.co.uk and you can book in a free consultation or free assessment. And I will check you and see you in the next video.